بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We're back with the Risala class of Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qayrawani رحمه الله تعالى uh, Passed away 386 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم from Mecca to Medina um, And we are in the part that is Al-Qasd في الماء Last time we talked about water uh, we're still kind of continuing that. The author says, وَقِلَّةُ الْمَاءِ مَعَا إِحْكَامِ الْغُسْلِ سُنَّةٌ وَالصَّرْفُ مِنْهُ غُلُوٌ وَبِدْعَةٌ That it is sunnah to not use that much water. And... Um, being excessive and wasteful of water is um, is going overboard and uh, it's an innovation as in going against the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, and then here the author says وَقَدْ تَوَضَّأَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِمُدٍ وَهُوَ وَزْنُ رَطْلٍ وَثُلُثٍ وَتَطَهَّرَ بِصَاعٍ وَهُوَ أَرْبَعَةُ أَمْدَادٍ بِمُدِّهِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ So this is uh, really um, uh, more or less quoting uh, the hadith in Bukhari and in Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to uh, make ghusul with a sa' and um, used to make uh, wudu with a with a mud, and uh, one narration uh, says sa uh, ila khamsati am dead. So um, a mud is like a handful. Um, uh, so four am uh, dead makes one sa. So uh, the ghusl was done with uh, four four to five handfuls, um, and a sa is really like a two liter bottle. Um, if probably to bring it closer to you. Um, yeah, so the general rule is being excessive and wasteful um, is it, haram. But uh, there is some narrations where the Prophet Sallam, you know, uh, uh, used like a bigger container. So, <clears throat> you know, um, I guess it maybe just depends for uh, about the person and the situation. Um, and but the general rule is um, using a lot of water. Um, it could really be between makru and haram, and uh, Allah SWT knows best, it depends on that person's situation. But for sure the sunnah is to use less water, and that is uh, the best way, no doubt about it. The author continues by saying, Taharatu al-makani wa thawb Taharatu al-buqati lil-salati wajibatun and the uh, purifying the place of prayer is wajib obligatory. وَكَذَلِكَ طَهَارَةُ الثَّوْبِ And the uh, the thawb, the clothing um, that one wears for prayer also needs to be uh, pure. فَقِيلَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ فِيهِمَا وَاجِبٌ وَجُوبَ الْفَرَائِضِ وَقِيلَ وَجُوبَ السُّنَنِ الْمُؤَكَّدَةِ So, uh, with regards to um, the thobe and uh, removing the najasa off of that or make sure that it's, um, uh, you know, pure for the prayer, then there's two mashhur opinions. Uh, big Maliki scholars... Um, uh, made these two opinions uh, mashhur, and uh, that's why Ibn Abi Zaid. Um, actually, interesting enough, he mentions both of the opinions, and he says faqila for both, right? And then note that Ibn Abi Zaid uh, Al Qayrawani <coughs> comes like four hundred years before Khalil, uh, really more than four hundred years uh, <coughs> before. So this is before the mashhur really was said and. You know, it's not like today where you have the books, you know, really just clear cut, straightforward. But even Khalil uh, in his Mukhtasar, he um, brings this uh, mas'ala um, in his book um, by using the word hell 
this is show the question and to say the khilaf like so the two main opinions are that it is wajib bi dhikri wal qudra the is obligatory with two conditions that one remembers to do so and the ability to to do to take it off and then the other opinion is the sunnah opinion <coughs> right so yeah um uh, the majority of scholars say it's it's wajib uh, like Imam Shafi and others, but um, yeah. So uh, most of the books, though, are gonna have that fard opinion with the two conditions, with dhikri wal qudra. Um, but that Sunnah opinion, uh, again, you know, uh, big uh, Maliki scholars like Ibn Rushd uh, al Jad, he was, you know, he's famously known for that opinion, and he's one of the four Imams that Imam uh, Khalil uh, uses in his Mukhtasar. So it's not necessarily a weak opinion. And they have proofs for both sides and um, a lot of back and forth. Um, but the opinion we're going to go with and that most of the books have um, is the Fard opinion. Um, and that's the majority opinion. But in the Maliki school, there's the two conditions for it. The Dhikri, remembering to do so. And Al-Qudra, the, um, uh, remembering to do so and the ability to take it off. Uh مواضع لا لا يصلي فيها وينهى عن الصلاة في معاطن الإبل ومحجة الطريق وظاهر بيت الله الحرام والحمام حيث لا يوقنا منه بطهارة والمزبلة والمجزرة ومكبرة المشركين وكنائسهم. So this is an important مسألة here, um, and uh, probably we'll end with this. So there's a hadith that mentions all of these things, and most of these narrations are weak or have weakness in it. So we have uh, a hadith that. In Bukhari Muslim, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, the Prophet says that Right, so the whole world has been made a masjid in a, a place that's pure and purifying. So Ibn Abdul Bar comes and says, like this, uh, you know, special thing for the Prophet can't be, you know, specified with places because the whole earth is a masjid. So how are we going to make anything haram? So all of these places generally they are makru to pray in, and um, if if there's no if there's um that's like the general rule, and if there's uh, uh except for the zahiri uh, bayt al haram, right? Uh, praying uh, on top of the uh, the masjid or the Kaaba. Uh, in Mecca, then that is uh, not permissible. That that's haram to do so. But the other places, uh, you know, even the hammam isn't like the hammam we know today. Hammam is like, you know, like the shower place. Um, yeah, the big thing is as long as it's pure, you can pray in it. But really, all these places, uh, even like the uh, the makbara, the uh, place of burial for the mushrikeen, the pagans. The maj the majzara as well. That's where, um, the, it's like the butcher shop and uh, the mezbela. Even the mezbela, you can technically pray in it. So all these places, I mean, as long as you know, uh, you're not praying on najasa, then the general rule is you can pray on it. Uh, it's makru to do so. I mean, uh, unless that's the only place you have. But um, in the Maliki school, all these places aren't uh, haram, uh, generally speaking. Um, in the, the hadith that mentioned these uh, specific things, uh, most of them uh, are weak. Um, the only one that is going to be forbidden uh, is going to be praying on top of the uh, Kaaba. Um, that is, uh, that's forbidden, haram. And I think we'll end with, uh, with that, uh, inshallah. Uh, again, with regards to this, uh, these things that are mentioned... Um, one should avoid praying in those places to get a khilaf as well. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's definitely, at least makruh, I mean, there are narrations that suggest it. And um, 
Uh, really, the general rule is if there's no impurities on, on some, even in the bathroom we know today, right, um, uh, like toilets and all that, uh, technically, if it's if it's a clean bathroom, you technically can pray in it, right? Uh, so Maliki School is expansive in that, and there's no place that's really limited, um, generally speaking. So that, um, you know, comes in handy as well. Um, so that's the last thing we'll end with for now, and Allah knows best. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 wa sall